And joining us now on the MetaShare guest line is Cedric Pierman. He's a husband, father, preacher, speaker, spent nine years in the NFL, was drafted by the Ravens, but spent most of his career with the Bengals from 2010 to 2018. He was a team captain for four years. He was a pro bowler in 2016. He played his college football at Virginia. Cedric, it's so great to have you back on Unpacking It. How are you? I'm doing great, Bryce. Um, thanks for having me back on. Really appreciate it. A absolutely. Well, excited to catch up with you and, and want to hear what's going on with, with you and your family. But but let's talk about your former team first, because the Cincinnati Bengals are coming off a, a special Super Bowl run. What did you think? What was the experience like for, for you now as a former player, watching some of your former teammates and your former team have that kind of success? Yeah, it was it was amazing. It was so exciting. I had a chance to go out to LA with uh, my wife, my mom, and my, my oldest son. And we just got to enjoy some of the festivities. We didn't go to the game. We flew back and uh, had like a birthday party slash uh, Super Bowl party here for my, my oldest son who turned uh, six, just turned six. Um, so that was, that was nice. And uh, it was just, man, it was just a magical ride, you know, you know, being uh, a former Bengal, um, just being proud of the guys. And a lot of the guys that I played with have moved on to other places. But, you know, still a Bengal um, through and through. So yeah, just the, the Super Bowl run, just the city, the excitement, everything was, you know, whatever you could have hoped for. You know, so I'm I'm super proud. Uh, no, it was a it was a fun run for sure. And what do you make of the team kind of moving forward? Kind of what do you take from this year and, and, and how do you expect the future a little bit? Yeah, um, so they've made a lot of moves in free agency. Everyone knew that they were going to um, go in and make some changes on the offensive line. Um, so they've done that. Um, and, you know, they they've signed some quality guys um, up front. So. You know, it the future looks very promising, and I will say one of my former teammates, um, Vincent Ray, he always um, talked about you know in the NFL, you don't necessarily build off like from the year before, like mm. it, it's the NFL, so you you have to start from zero all over again, and just because you know you had great success the year before does not guarantee, you know that you're gonna be successful in the next year. It takes it takes work. It takes commitment. You got to do this all over again. So um, I have no doubt the Bengals will be successful. I believe that. But at the same time, there is that, you know, you got to remind yourself, you know, it's not a given, you know, no. <laughs> a team could just like the Bengals, you know, came out of nowhere this past year, you know, another team could do that. So um, I know that they over there, they know that. And, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to this upcoming season. Absolutely, because what is it? Half the teams that make the playoffs don't make it the next year, and, and division winners are, are flipping every year. And so uh, right. that's absolutely the case. And as you know, the AFC North is as, as tough as any division, and like it was last year, and it should be that way again. And so, yeah, no uh, no guarantees for sure, but that's why it's it's fun. And that's why last year was so special that the Bengals were able to go that far for sure. Well, all right. So, so you've been you've been out of of playing and out of the league for the for the last couple of years, and so I'm I'm curious how has the transition gone? You know, nine years in the NFL, long career. Uh, but what was it like finally saying, "All right, I'm I'm done." Yeah, you know, my career ended, you know, in 2017, the 2017-18 season, and uh, you know, I barely got off, you know. I'd say off the ground because my I got hurt in the third preseason game, so I was put on IR for the uh, remainder of the year. And you know that was that was tough because I knew my career was going to come to an end at some point, and I was really hoping that I would be able to leave the game on my own terms. And you know, unfortunately, God had other plans for me. Um, but at the same time, it was uh, good timing because my wife was able to you know continue her career in pursuit of that. We were able to graduate from med school and then subsequently moved down here to Chapel Hill, right outside of Chapel Hill for her to start, you know, her career in residency. Um, and then we have four kids as well. So um, that allows me to be at home with the children. Um, 
a little bit of daddy daycare going on. Um, and then also just finished my MBA over um, at the Kelly School of Business in Indiana online program. So, you know, I've, I've been doing a little bit, trying to stay busy. Um, some coaching here and there, some character coaching through Fellowship of Christian Athletes, um, you know, a pair of church ministry. So I've been trying to stay busy. And um, but most importantly, my job has been, you know, here at home. But it looks like, you know, with the kids going off to school soon, you know, I'm going to have some opportunities some you know, some time to start my own career. So looking forward to that. Very cool. All right, well, I want to talk more about that, but, but I think we got to go back and unpack this a little bit as far as your, your wife being a doctor. And, and so I'm curious how that worked while you were playing. And then now that, that you, you, you're done playing and she's been able to, to really go all out with it, take us into that, that whole process. Cause that's fascinating to me. Right. So, so while I was playing, she was, uh, she was in med school and she was pregnant when she first um, started med school, she was pregnant with her first child with um, our, our son Emmaus. So she was waking up early in the morning, um, 4 a.m., sometimes earlier, doing schoolwork. Wow. Um, and a lot of her stuff was able to be accomplished online. Uh, so she was doing med school um, while I was playing. And you know she had her first child and then she took some time off. She finished the first year, took some time off. And um, then we got pregnant with the twins, our twin girls, Ava and Isabel. Wow. So she was doing some school work with that, but obviously, you know, with twins, she had to take more time off. Um, and then I got, in, I had, you know, two injuries back in back to back years. So that allowed me to be home with, with Emmaus and then the twins also. So that was, um, I guess that was a blessing in disguise to be able to be at home. Um, but yeah, she, my wife is amazing. Just the grit and the determination that she has, and then just the wonderful mother and uh, wife that she is. Um, you know, our family wouldn't be our family without her. So I'm just so thankful for that. Man, that, I mean, that's remarkable what, what she's been able to do. And so what, what kind of medicine does she study? What, what kind of doctor? Yeah, so she's looking to go into sports medicine. Cool. Uh, so and during her undergrad and graduate school uh, year, she did a lot of uh, things that, along the lines of concuss concussion research. Mm. Um, she got her uh, undergraduate or her master's degree in neuroscience. She's amazing again. And, uh, you know, she's uh, I'm so happy she was able to return to med school because or, or to and get into residency because for for a while we were, you know, thinking, you know, is this gonna, the right path for our family? So um, she's back in it. She's, you know, residency is tough this first year, but she's grinding it out. She's, she's doing a wonderful job. Very cool. And so she's at, at UNC Chapel Hill. And so, yes. all right, so I'm a big basketball fan. As you can see, I've got my, my Duke uh, jersey hanging behind me. So have you jumped on the Carolina bandwagon? What, what's your interest in the basketball team? Um, well, since I went to the University of Virginia, I'm really not allowed to cheer for you. <laughs> UNC. True. That's fair. <laughs> no, but all joking aside, you know, um, um, just being down here, um, you know, you kind of root for the ACC teams. So, you know, I'm rooting for UNC, and, and, you know, and Duke, even though they play each other, you know, I just want to see a good game from here on out. Um, and, you know, being from the ACC, so I just want an ACC team to win it all, kind of. So um, it doesn't matter. It really matter to me. <laughs> all right. That's that's fair. No, I'm, I'm, I'm with you, man. I, I want to see uh, Duke, of course, get it done. But it's it's been fun yeah. to have have Carolina in the mix. And I'm, I'm glad this matchup's happening. It's, it's going to be sweet. All yeah. right. So let's uh, let, let's kind of also look at the last you know kind of few years since since you retired. I'm curious because you know, I know a lot of guys. It's just a, a, a tricky season of life transitioning out of the NFL. And, and for you, being a follower of Jesus. How has your faith grown and, and been challenged in this in this new season of life? Yeah, I, I definitely think uh, it's been a challenging time, especially uh, for me, just being honest, uh, you know, just transitioning, um, you know, out of the league, you know, something, you know, I played football all my life. Um, so, 
you know, finally I'm, I'm coming to the point I'm 31, 32 years old. And, you know, most of my peers have been in their career for, you know, 10 years already, you know, and I'm just kind of <laughs> starting at zero all over again. Um, so, you know, that was a little, that was, that was tough. Um, and then the way that my career ended too, um, you know, just tough as well. But, you know, I see my, my time being as a father, being here at home with the kids, like you, you can you can't get that time back. And it's not like I'm going to look back and I mean, Oh, I wish I wouldn't have spent that time at home. You know, <laughs> it, it's never going to be like that. You know, that would even be crazy, you know, to it, <laughs> to say, yep. um, so I'm thankful for the time that I've been at home and being at home with four kids, it's been tough. And it's definitely uh, taught me a lot about serving, you know, played in the NFL for nine years and you learn, you know, people cater to you all the time, you know, 24 mm. seven. Um, and if you're not careful, you can kind of think that you're more than what you are. You can think that you're, you deserve to be treated a certain way or you deserve certain things. And just being at home with the kids, God has definitely used that to um, bring a servant heart mm. because with the kids, you know, you, you have to serve, you have to be there for them. You have to change diapers. You have to cook meals. You have to, <laughs> you have to be there with them 24 seven. So it's just been a complete, complete reversal for me. And it's, I thank God that he's done that in my life because it really has shown me who I was. I wasn't, I didn't have much of a servant attitude and servant heart before mm. you know being thrust into you know being at home with the kids and it's just it's it's helped my family it's helped tremendously in my marriage mm. um so i'm i'm really thankful for that oh that's that's neat to hear and yeah no question kids uh kids humble us and 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 cause us to understand what it means to to be a servant but for you to be all in every day uh that's a that's a, a big deal and, and kind of a rare, a rare situation too for you. So, um, so that, that's neat to hear about. Well, as you do reflect back on your career, how, how do you uh, evaluate it? What, what comes to mind when, when you look back at those, those nine years? You know, what I think about is that I was just extremely blessed because I remember, I remember early on in my career, I'm just having a really tough time. My first year in the league, just bounced around to a few teams, bounced around to a few teams and just really struggled to find a home. And I always pray, you know, Lord, if you would just allow me to stick in, you know, one place so I, that I can just carve out a role, um, that would be great. And the Lord answered that prayer and, and going to Cincinnati. And as I look back on my time, you know, there, you know, it was a special time, um, I believe. You know, we didn't win the playoff games. We didn't, you know, have the Super Bowl run that we had hoped to have. But I think um, I think God definitely uses sports, and he's definitely used sports in my life. And he used that my time in Cincinnati to really grow me in my faith, grow me in my trust of him. And then um, just the – the community of brothers that I had not only on the team, but also friendships in the community as well, you know, or lifelong friendships, guys that, you know, I played with and guys that I got to know in the community, you know, I still keep in touch with to this day. And um, that's something outside of, you know, outside of my career, outside of football, but was, I couldn't have played football. I couldn't have been successful without that piece about having the brotherhood, you know, and a lot of people talk about after they finish playing the game, you know, it's just the brotherhood they miss. And, um, you know, I, I concur with that, that, that is mm. just so vital, so important to your success, having mentors, having, you know, other brothers um, that you can, you know, go to with issues, um, with struggles, um, who can help you, who can pray for you, who can give you advice. So, when I look back on my career, that's what I think I think about the most. I, I love it. And and you mentioned some of those you know, situations that built your faith and caused you to, to trust in the, the Lord uh, more throughout your career. What were some of those those circumstances that you could share or, or kind of some some specific ways that you really saw saw God move and, and work in your, your life and, and strengthen 
your, your character and strengthen your faith through that? I, you know, I dealt with uh, a lot of injuries throughout my career. And just a lot of times with Cincinnati, you know, I was on the on the bubble of making the team. And so just every year, just having, you know, my my teammates, uh, people in the community that um, that I became good friends with, being able to just share with them those struggles and those concerns was always was always helpful. You know, I think about if I had to walk through those times alone, you know, that would have been. I don't know how I would have been able to overcome some of those difficulties, you know, some of those, those trials. So uh, I look back on that and, you know, I'm, again, I'm thankful for the community that I had, you know, while I was in, in Cincinnati. And, and what does that look like? Cause as far as being a, an NFL player and having your you know, brothers in the locker room, but then also finding people outside of, the NFL to have that spiritual community around you. What, what, what was that process like for you? What were the challenges with that for you? Yeah. I, you know, I think uh, the, the biggest challenge is not, not knowing if people are really genuine. Do they want to just, you know, hang out with you because you're an NFL football player and you know, because you have the access that you have, you know, that's always, you know, the, the tough thing, but I was, I was fortunate just to be able to find some, some, some good brothers who, who didn't care that I played, yeah. you know, they just wanted to see me grow in my faith, grow in Christ. And, you know, they wanted, they wanted to see me ob- obviously do well in football, but more importantly, you know, from my conversations with them, you know, I could, I could tell, you know, that, you know, these guys aren't just about football, you know, and I look at their lives, I look at their families, you know, how, how are they leading? And, uh, you know, I could discern that, you know, these guys are genuine and they just want to see me do well. So that's what, that was a challenge that, you know, you, sometimes you, you, I did have to distance myself from, you know, certain people, but mm-hmm. uh, I'm thankful that I was not too many. I'm thankful that I was able to find, you know, those connections. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. And it's so, so important for sports fans listening just to yeah, hear that perspective and, oh man, I met an NFL player. Okay, fine. But, but to actually build relationships and, and that kind of thing. That's what, that's what, right. what matters more. And, and you're longing for deep relationships, just like we all are. That's, that's part of the, right. part of the deal. So, all right. Well, you're also uh, just based on what I've, I've seen from your website and different things, have a desire to to speak and and preach and 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 have been been doing that. Um, what are you most passionate about uh, preaching and speaking? What what have some of those those opportunities been for you? And some of the the topics that you've you've hit on. Right, a, a lot of times when I go speak, I go share just uh, my testimony. Just uh, I became a Christian. Um, I share that a lot. Um, recently, just this past uh, weekend, when I went up to Roanoke, Virginia to um, speak at um, their annual um, FCA banquet fundraiser. So that was that was a great event. It was a great time. Um, the the ministry there really is taking off. God is doing some wonderful things, reaching a lot of coaches and uh, young athletes as well. Um, and, and that's something that I'm passionate about doing also just reaching um, coaches and then young athletes as well. I feel like I have a lot to offer. Um, Just this past football season, I was the character coach over at um, Orange High School, um, which is uh, a school close to where I live. So that was a great experience for me. It was the first time I've ever ever done something like that. Um, So it it was just good for me just to be around the game, be around the kids, um, and, you know, they're just like I was at that age, you know, just searching for identity, mm-hmm. um, trying to be the best that athlete they can be. They have desires to play college football and, you know, have dreams and goals. So, you know, I just made it um, a part of, you know, my desire and my plan just to help them, you know, in that pursuit. Um, but the most important thing to me is that they know Jesus. Mm-hmm. You know, um, because they can they can gain the whole world and not know Christ. And for me, in my opinion, that's just not worth it. 
Um, so, you know, that's a passion of mine to see, you know, young, you know, coaches and young athletes come to know Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, when you measure being a character coach and, and, and getting into their, their, their lives and, and being there for them and helping them grow and develop, what, what are some of the, the common character flaws or uh, the, the word integrity comes to mind? What are you challenging these guys with or, or what are some of the things that, that are just commonalities that, that even people listening today, uh, just that, that you've noticed and that you're really you know, uh, wanting to see people uh, grow in, in those specific areas? Yeah, I think, I think some of the things that I normally see in, in, younger, in younger athletes is, is pride. I mm. see that a lot. Um, kids thinking that, you know, that they're just that much better than what they really are. Mm. And, you know, I, I just think that that's just a common thing, you know, at, at that age, your, your world isn't that for most kids, you know, in high school, the, their worldview isn't, isn't that large, no fault of their own. It's just, you know, their life experiences are just kind of limited. Mm. Um, and I, I think that, varies and depends upon, you know, what your parents do and what part of the country or world that you grow up in. So I see, I see pride a lot. Um, and then I, I see a lot of kids just trying to be cool, mm. just trying to fit in. Um, just trying to look like something that they're not. And, you know, I think, and, and trying to speak to that and trying to deal with that can be can be kind of dif difficult and it really you really have to be one-on-one -on -one with kids you know like that and who are you know interested in trying to fit in you really have to get them one-on-one -on -one and then just kind of get some common ground along with them to develop to develop you know conversation which you hope will lead to deeper things and deeper conversation that, that's neat so i i haven't uh, been around high schoolers in, in a long time probably since i coached swim team years ago. And I, at this point, as a 35 year old, I feel like I'm not cool enough to relate to that, that generation. But how, how have you, I think you were the same age. So how, how do you not necessarily worry about, oh, I'm not cool enough. Well, I guess you have the NFL uh, card to play. Right. But, <laughs> yeah. but ultimately, I mean, that helps, I'm sure. But ultimately you have yeah. to, to relate to them. How have you navigated that? Cause to me, that seems, that seems overwhelming. Yeah, I think about that a lot, how I can relate. Um, and some people, you know, you know, try to listen to the same music, you know, these kids listen to or try to, you know, speak the same lingo. You know, I'm just not like that. <laughs> I, <laughs> right, I don't I'm care about all that stuff. I'm not either. <laughs> I don't care about all that stuff. Um, and I, I think just being yourself and just being authentic, because I think I remember when I was young, I remember, you know, my high school teammate. You know, we could spot a fake from a mile off. <laughs> so yep. if someone was just trying to be not real. Um, so I think kids can, I think young kids can sense that. I really do. So, you know, I just try to, you know, just try to be myself. You know, um, I'm just a regular, normal, you know, guy. <laughs> so, and yeah, I do have the NFL card to play, which I think that definitely does. That, that opens a lot of doors. That brings in, you know, respect. Um, well, I say respect and then I think some kids just don't care that you played in the NFL. Some, they don't really care. Um, football is just not that, uh, to some are, you know, they play, but it's just not important, that important Yeah. Uh, to them. So I say that all to say that, you know, I just try to be myself. Um, and again, pray that the Lord would open doors that he would, you know, you know, make a way for deeper conversation, um, make a way that you can connect, you know, you know, with, with the kids. So that's what, that's what I like to take too. When I, when I, when I go out to practices and stuff like that. Yeah, no, that's awesome. And I, yeah, I guess I've just been thinking a little bit about, uh, you know, how can I help encourage that, that, that younger generation? I've, I mean, I've got a two year old and a seven month old, so they're not at that stage yet, but just, at church or in the right. neighborhood and, and just having some, some level of, of connection and, and impact. Um, so anyway, you got me thinking even more uh, about that because I, my heart breaks for 
I mean, every generation's got its own issues for sure, but especially after the last couple of years and what, you know, the, the, the 20 and unders have, have dealt with is, uh, gosh, it's, it's kind of another level. Um, so anyway, right. it's been, uh, been on my mind and heart a little bit because uh, even just the guys I have lunch with and talk to and conversations, it's there's a lot of challenges for dads and and, and kids right. specifically. I would say even in high school. So, um, so anyway, that's good. That's good stuff. All right, Cedric. Well, we'll we'll wrap up with uh, with this. Just as far as your your own personal time with the Lord and and, and maybe uh, Bible studies or, or whatever you're involved with these days. What what are some things that that have really been on your your mind and heart? Uh, personally and then things that God's been, been teaching you or, or showing you uh, most recently. Yeah. I think uh, the, the thing that has been most on my mind is just being consistent. You know, my kids here at home and my wife, they need to see me being consistent, mm. me being the same, the same Christ likeness, you know, every day. And that's, that is the Mount Everest of a thing. Um, mm. to try to be that way every single day because I'm still in this body. I'm still in this flesh. So it's always warring against me and um, trying to get me um, my own flesh. You know, I'm not a perfect person. So I'm prone to, to wander off, to stray. I'm prone to um, say the wrong thing, say the, say the right thing the wrong way. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. So, so much um, I'm, I'm prone to doing that is not like uh, Jesus. That's not like God. So um, my thing is just to strain, to strive, not to be perfect, um, but to be consistent, mm. to be consist consistently like like Christ, and just to to love my wife um, as best as I can, like Christ loved the church. And again, that's a Mount Everest of a thing. You know, that's something to that I'm never going to get perfect. I don't have a mm. chance to, but I can strive for it. Mm. And I think as long as I'm striving, then I'm not going backwards. Mm. Um, so and then with my kids, I think something that's been impressed upon, upon me is just the, my tone with them. My wife has brought that up to me, you know, on several occasions. And, you know, I've been against, you know, what she said and not I haven't been right in doing that. Um, and she's definitely right. You know, sometimes I can just have a sharp tone, you know, mm. growing up playing football all your life. That's kind of all you hear from your coaches and, you know, from even your teammates, just like that sharp, aggressive tone. And I, I can't bring that into my family, into my household, mm. because my kids, they don't need, need that. They're not going to strive with that. So that's something that I'm working on daily, just the just the tone of my voice. Just doesn't it seem just like like a small thing? But it's yeah. just such a big thing that can bring life into your home or bring death into your home. Mm -hmm. um, so <clears throat> those are a couple of things I'm working on, just my consistency and then just, you know, tone, my tone and a voice in the house. Um, that's something the Lord has definitely impressed upon my heart. Oh, that's that's great. I appreciate you sharing that. And uh, that's a wonderful encouragement for all of us. And. I'm one of three boys, so growing up in my household, yeah, it was a little louder, a little more intense, and now I've got two daughters, so yeah, it doesn't doesn't translate that yeah. that same way. So right, that's good, yeah, good, it's completely good, different for you. <laughs> good reminder, got to keep that yeah. keep that tone tone in check. That's that's awesome. Well, Cedric, man, we we had you on the back then. We were doing the radio show years ago, and it's so great to have you back on unpacking it and excited what uh, just to hear about what God's doing in your life and this next phase and, and being a being an all-time full-time dad uh, is is awesome so uh, keep up the great work there and excited for the next doors that open up for you as well and so uh, so keep in touch and we're not that far away down here in Charlotte uh, to, to where you are so uh, thank you and uh, and look forward to the next time hey great thank you so much I really appreciate it Absolutely. There's Cedric Pierman joining us here on the MetaShare guest line on the Unpacking It podcast. Mm -hmm.